basement ADUs are very exciting. I'm going to share useful information with you in this video that you want to hear before starting that kind of project. And I'll tell you how to build one step by step once you're ready. First things first, you're making a smart move investing your time learning now. By watching videos like this one, the more you learn up front, the better off you'll be for a couple reasons. One, you can get a better ADU by planning thoughtfully, saving money where it makes sense, and using best-in-class design ideas to improve the look and feel of your basement ADU. And two, you go into your project with your eyes wide open. You want to budget enough money to finish the project well. Especially if you're planning on renting this unit out, you want to know what your costs will be so that you can make sure the rental income will pay off in due time. Now here's what you'll learn. At the end of this video, you're going to have a primer for basement ADUs, and you'll know the biggest, most expensive design concerns that can typically come up with basement ADUs. We'll touch on some important design concept for basement ADUs, and we'll have a few good ideas kicking around, so you'll get excited and be ready to start thinking about the next step. At the end of this video, I'm going to tell you where I learned all this information and how you can learn even more than I know. I'll share a step-by-step -step guide to building your ADU. This is a marathon, not a sprint. The prize here is really big. It's like owning your own apartment that you can rent out or you can give to a family member or a place to live independently but it's not super easy or everyone would do it. And if you ever feel like it's overwhelming, just take a break. Subscribe to the channel, which I know is a little self-serving, but it makes it really easy for you to come back later after you've relaxed a bit and finished your lesson. It's worth sticking to it and investing your time early to learn how you can turn a basement into an ADU, one of the most affordable ADU types there is. The reason basement conversions can be so affordable is really interesting and simple. Basement ADUs are very exciting because they're a type of conversion. That's where you're converting part of your primary house into a secondary unit or ADU. And they tend to be the most affordable type of conversion under the right conditions. Because you've already got floors, wall, and ceiling. You can use the same water and electrical hookups although they might not be exactly where you want them. And you'll understand what that means by the end of this video. But that, these strengths can also create limitations, which we'll talk about later. But these can be a cost-effective way to get all the benefits of an ADU, passive income, housing flexibility, etc. And you might not have to spend that much money. How much money are we talking about? Well, I've actually heard of people doing basement ADUs for $20,000 at the low end. That's almost only going to happen if you have a basement that's already finished, like living quarters, and you just need to tweak it to make it an ADU. For example, adding a kitchenette, filing for a permit, and you're done. There are a lot of people out there with the right conditions to convert a basement for between $80,000 to $150,000, which is cheaper than most detached ADUs. But the devil's going to be in the details. I don't want to sugarcoat it because I've also seen ADU projects that cost above three hundred thousand. At, at that point, you could have built a very nice detached ADU. So let's go in to the next step: the budget busters. Basement ADUs have a few really important items that can easily blow up your budget, and we're going to go over those first. First things first: the foundation walls. Now. If you don't have a solid foundation under your house, you've got bigger problems, and it's time to address those before you daydream about an ADU. Uh, a questionable foundation, you got to take care of first. You need an engineer, the foundation specialist, to come in and tell you whether everything is up to snuff or if there's work you need to do. And if you do need to do work, foundation walls can cost up to $50,000. Next on the list of budget busters, Humidity. If you've spent a wet winter in your home, you probably know whether or not that basement starts to smell damp. If you have any dampness in the basement, take it seriously. Eventually, damp walls lead to mold, and that can lead to air quality issues. There's health concerns, and generally, it's just not fun having a damp smell like you're living in a dungeon. 
there are things your contractor can do to keep outside water out. And a lot of those things might not involve work in the ADU. Uh, for example, fixing the primary house's gutters and drainage might do a lot to help the basement out, and it'll help the primary residents. Water intrusion work can be relatively affordable, like $5,000. If you've got more serious work, it might go all the way up to $20,000, though. So I've included it in the budget busters. Next, I want to talk about headroom. You need a minimum amount of space between the floor and your ceiling for it to be living, uh, livable space. If the ceilings aren't high enough, you're going to have to dig deeper. That means ex excavating and pouring a new slab. Or sometimes lifting the house is an option. Either way, that's going to cost you. Uh, headroom is something that can easily cost up to $20,000, and, and that's worth knowing before you get into the project. If you don't already have a separate entrance for your basement, you probably need to put one in, and that's potentially going to require a staircase or a ramp. Now, that kind of work, if you're excavating and installing a staircase, can cost up to $15,000. So I've included it in this section of projects that will significantly increase your basement ADU budget. While you're doing that work, you can excavate outside the unit for the staircase to not take up space in your ADU. Uh, later on, we'll talk about light a little bit more, but you might want to use the entry work that you're doing to put a big, nice window or a big French door um, into the unit that just lets in a little bit of extra light from that excavated area outside your wall. Okay, utility access is a bit of an odd one that people aren't used to thinking about. The way to think about utility access is that if somebody in one residence is on vacation, can the person in the other residence still access the water shut off, the electrical panel, and all that? You may need to split the utilities so each unit has access, or you may create a shared common space where both residences can access it. This is going to cost between 5 and 20k, depending on how much work you actually have to do, and so it's also included in the budget busters. Separately, if you happen to have to do a new sewer line that connects all the way back at the street, that is a real pain. It can cost ten dollars to $20,000 by itself. If the city does that to you for a basement ADU, ugh, that, it, it really doesn't make sense. See if you can work with somebody there to avoid a new sewer line. You might also need special window work. Sometimes the city will require a bedroom to have egress windows big enough to escape through in case the door to the room gets blocked off. You may need to cut into the concrete foundation walls and excavate wells around the window, and that can run a few thousand dollars. That said, here's a clip from an incredibly experienced ADU consultant, Cole Peterson, riffing on that concept a little bit. This is where you see how an experienced designer can save you money by creatively approaching a few different problems at once. You can have, if you have a studio style ADU, you can literally just have one door in theory and no windows, and that would be adequate as far as a means of egress. Um, if you have a one bedroom, if you have a, a bedroom, then you have to have an egress window from that bedroom directly to the exterior. So sometimes one of the tricks that I'll do with homeowners is talk about how you design that space. So it's officially on paper, a studio style apartment. And as long as there is a eight foot, or I think it's like eight foot clearance, horizontal clearance to get from where you would sleep to where the front door is, you don't have to do any egress windows. So you could have, you could literally put it in like a, a piece of furniture that would serve as a wall to create a one bedroom life space. So say so you get one of those cub units from Ikea that has a wall, a bank of one foot cubes, and you could put clothing in there. And then that basically gives, gives a private space for the sleeping area. But then on paper, the plans that you submit show just unobstructed living space from your bed, where your bed might be, zero bedroom, ADU, to the front door. All of a sudden, there's no need for an egress window. Now on the other side, you know, on the flip side, you would want to have, you do want to have lots of natural light in a basement unit. So if you can afford it, and if the space allows for it, you should add extra egress windows just to get extra light, if not for egress itself. I love that clip from our ADU question and answer series because it shows the value of learning all the ins and outs of the code in your area. A trick like creating a big studio field that also avoids needing extra egress windows can make a big impact on your design and on the feel of your apartment. At the same time, 
You've got a good designer experience and who knows, ah, you shouldn't skimp on windows. We'll get more into that in the design tips later on. But I shouldn't get ahead of myself because the next step is permitting your basement ADU. ADU planning and permit also has budget busters. Now, permit fees vary by jurisdiction, and they vary more depending on the ADU project itself. So all of this is going to require a bit of research on your part where you look up what's going on in your jurisdiction. But in a minute, I'm going to give a specific example from California where people can cut a square foot off their plan and save over $5,000. If you're building a $50,000 basement ADU, an extra $5,000 in entitlements and fees is adding 10% to your costs. So you understand why you should know these rules and make the right choices. How to think about entitlement costs. If you want the cheapest possible project, or you just hate paying planning fees, I get it, there are two special ADU rules in California that you can optimize toward. And these will limit your ADU size and function and get you a cheaper project. But in most jurisdictions, you can go bigger than these suggestions with just nominal costs. So I would recommend you do the research for your local area and think about the more expensive options and build them into your budget. See if you can recover those expenses through rent down the road. You might be able to build a nicer apartment and charge more in rent and make up for the expense of entitlement and construction. Or you might choose the smaller, simpler unit. The key is to figure out what you're getting for your investment. So let's talk about a specific example, impact fees. These are the type of fees that a city can charge during the permitting process. Um, they're fees that developers get charged as one-offs, usually to offset the costs to local services like schools and parks. If you build a five-story apartment building with dozens of people in it, you'd be putting a burden on schools, parks, and so on. So the city charges an impact fee to offset that usage. And some cities are using it fairly. But other cities were using impact fees to make ADU construction cost prohibitive. This is very naughty. The state of California has passed new laws in 2019 that went into effect January 2020. Now you can build an ADU under 750 square feet and avoid impact fees completely. So an example of how that works, in Cupertino, uh, San Jose charges a 751 square foot ADU $5,699 in school and parkland impact fees. The exact same homeowner applying for a 749 square foot ADU will pay $0 in impact fees. Yeah, that's a real example. $5,699 difference for two square feet. So check what your city is charging for impact fees before you design your unit. If it's not cost prohibitive, great. Uh, but if it's $6,000 and you're only gaining a little bit of space, design around it. For example, you can design around square footage restrictions. An ADU has to have some independent elements, but it's allowed to share other elements with the primary residence. For example, you could create a shared space for utility access or a laundry room, spaces that don't contribute to the ADU's square footage because they're still part of the primary residence. Consider making a shared space for utilities or creating non-living storage space that won't contribute to your ADU's square footage. You might be able to make a really nice shared laundry room that doesn't count toward the 750 square feet total. And it still feels like part of the ADU apartment. Okay, next step, design in a basement. The strengths of basement conversion are also the weaknesses. You're using the existing wall ceilings and structures, which is what makes it affordable but it also imposes limits. There's an art here to using the weaknesses and turning them into useful design features. I had a clip from Cole Peterson earlier. On his website, you can read about a lot of basement conversions. Some have a real archeological feel to them because there's always a surprise old junction box in the wall or a load bearing joist that you have to work around. Expect surprises. Be flexible, design around the basement because you won't be able to bend the basement to your will. For example, basements have nooks and crannies. 
if they have a bunch of nooks and crannies that you can use as storage space without necessarily adding square footage to the ADU, that's a good thing. You might have columns or other elements that you can't move that you want to fit what you've got into the space creatively. You can make some pretty oddly shaped cabinets and closets, and they're still going to get used. There's a lot of situations in a basement conversion where you can create extra storage space without eating into your precious living square footage. Consider common areas between the primary and secondary house. Consider building an accessory structure for storage, like a shed, outside the house. Think about spaciousness. Designing any ADU, you want to think about the feeling of spaciousness. Because we're often working with smaller square footage than what a lot of people are used to living in. And we've got a lot of tricks we can use to make a limited square footage feel very spacious. But in a basement, a lot of those tricks are unavailable to us because we're using existing walls, ceilings, and floor. So for example, we can't go with really high ceilings to make a space feel bigger. We can't always do big French doors that open to the garden. Um, but some of the tricks still do work. Long, uninterrupted lines of sight make a space feel bigger. Lots of light makes a place feel bigger. And darkness makes a place feel smaller and more cramped. Think about burying the height of elements on the ceiling. If everything sits on one plane, it can look really samey. But as soon as you've got multiple planes, then there's some variation and it helps you uh, feel like the space is much bigger. Okay, that's a lot of information. Are you ready for the next step? Because right now you already know how basement ADUs can be so affordable. Uh, and one of the most affordable ways to develop passive rental income or housing security. You know the big ticket items that might make a basement ADU much more expensive, so you can budget accordingly around them. And you've started thinking about cool design concepts to make the space feel like a great big home. If you're ready for the next step, I have a recommendation. That very experienced designer I shared earlier in the video, Cole Peterson, he has an online course specifically about designing, financing, and building an ADU. It's a step-by-step -step guide to building an ADU. You can learn at your own pace by watching videos online. There are 20 detailed videos that cover every step of ADU development. Lessons on financing, designing, permitting, building, rental management. You can pick and choose which videos to watch based on what's relevant to your project. There are over 40 quick tip videos that are insanely useful. And there are five ADU walkthroughs showing different types of ADUs, including basement ADUs. There's interviews with homeowners who've built their own projects. And the course is designed for beginners. But the class is so high quality that licensed contractors can take it to get continuing education credits. You're watching this video now, so I know that you'll enjoy these high quality detailed videos that teach you every step of designing an ADU. The next step is easy. If you're committed to getting your own ADU, I highly recommend clicking the link to the Build an ADU course in the video description below. You will save so much time and money with what you learn about the design, permit, and build process once you soak up all that information. Cole's a great teacher. I've personally signed up for the ADU Academy he runs. I've read his book and I fully endorse the course. If you're not sure and you're still absorbing all this information, that's okay too. Uh, what I recommend is you click the bell to subscribe to this channel and get more free videos about ADUs. Um, it's a great way to learn and it's great that you're thinking about ADUs because these secondary homes give homeowners a way to build personal wealth while also helping uh, build their community uh, by providing more housing inventory. So you're doing a great thing by educating yourself. Uh, I hope you get an ADU of your own one day. And thanks for making a How To ADU part of your research. Um, now, basement ADUs are not the only game in town. So if you still want to learn about other types of ADUs, check out the next video.